this is Jasper. And Jasper, he's sad. He's sad because when he goes to the dog park, his dog park buddies, they can't keep up with him. They're fat and slow. And he also thinks that they may be sick for some reason. And he thinks, he thinks it may be because of the food they're eating. Hey, this is Zach with MusclesAndVeggies.com and today we're going to talk about dog food. Dog food? Dog food? So we want to feed our pets good things. We want to make sure we're giving them nutritious food. Uh, how do we prolong the life of our animal that we love so much? So that's what we're going to talk about today is what the food industry is doing to our pet food and how we can combat that and feed our dog real nutritious food. So the pet food industry is a $72 billion industry. Uh, this is ran by companies like Colgate, uh, Mars Candy, Nestle, uh, even Procter & Gamble have a share in this. So a lot of big name companies. I found a really interesting article from the Cornucopia Institute called Decoding Pet Food, and that's where I found the following information. Now, what's interesting is the FDA did some testing on some pet food, and what they found was strange levels of euthanizing drugs in the pet food, and they were kind of shocked by this, and when uh, researchers dug in and kind of investigated some of this, they found that the euthanizing drugs were coming from animals who were killed with euthanizing drugs and then used to make pet food. The major theme of this article basically touched on how labeling from the FDA with pet foods uh, was worthless. Basically, nothing needed scientific backing to be able to claim on a paper, which allowed them to put just basically anything into the pet food. So because they can put just about anything in their food, it's actually become a common practice for the beef industry to take their sick or downed or crippled cattle and give them to the pet food industry to make pet food out of them. So the article actually brought out that it's a win for the pet industry because they get free food given to them and it's a win for the beef industry because the beef owner doesn't have to pay the hundred dollars per ton at the landfill to dispose of the cattle. So you think about an animal who's probably been pumped full of antibiotics to try to save its life whatever sickness it was going through. Uh, and then after it was pumped full of antibiotics, this animal passed away, or maybe it was about to pass away. They donated it to the pet food industry. And now this sick animal has become pet food. Now, technically through the FDA, uh, pet food industry, they are allowed to use uh, animal sources like waste that the processing plants don't want to use, scraps, or even roadkill is legal for them to use for pet food. So it's time that we pay attention to our pet's foods uh, and pay attention to BPAs and the synthetic preservatives and food dyes that they put into them. So one thing I really want to touch on today is when looking at our pet food, uh, we can do this the same way we look at our food. What is the natural way that this animal is supposed to eat? Or what is the natural way the human would eat off the earth? If you look at a dog or a cat, they're primarily uh, carnivorous and they pack and hunt their animals and eat primarily a diet of protein, a little bit of fat, and very, very little carbohydrate. However, if you look at our pet industry dog and cat food, the number one ingredient usually always is grains and carbohydrates. Think about our country heavily subsidizes grain and agriculture and soy, wheat, corn, things like that. And they're also very, very genetically modified. They're heavily sprayed with pesticides. And then if, if they give us the best part of that food, what do you think they give the dogs and cats or the pet food? The worst possible part. And these have been tested the highest in mycotoxins or mold toxins that is in dog and cat food. There's also such things as BPAs, food dyes, and synthetic preservatives in this pet food. So you may be thinking, well, can I even afford to give my cat or dog a real food diet? So when I first started researching this, 
we were spending an astronomical amount on six weeks worth of dog food. And it turns out that feeding the dog a real food diet actually was about half the cost. A lot of the same foods that my wife and I buy for ourselves, we buy for the dog as well and cook down for him and make dog food. We save a lot of our bones, a lot of our carcasses, scraps, things like that, and we cook those down in a crock pot and give it to him as well. Uh, we, we buy beef bones from our butcher, uh, excellent bone broth for ourselves, and then we give him the bones after they're fully cooked. Uh, we also focus a lot on organ meats like kidneys, liver, hearts, things like that are easy and cheap to get from the butcher as well. And tendons. Tendons are really good treats to cut up in dog food too. We also buy a lot of grass-fed beef in bulk uh, and that helps to mix up in his dog food as well. Now we also use simple things like really cheap sardines, super healthy for the dog, uh, canned tuna, olive oil, coconut oil, all things that work really great for a dog's diet. Now because these things are all things that we use, it's easy to buy them in bulk and now I save about 50% of the cost that I was spending on that hoity-toity dog food. So I encourage you, if you love your animal, cat or dog, feed it the most nourishing, healthy food you can possibly find. This is my dog after he had two cans of sardines, some olive oil, and some butter. And I want to give a big shout out to the Keto Dog Sanctuary. They're down in Texas, uh, an amazing operation that's doing incredible work saving dogs from cancer. Look them up, Google them. And if you learned from something from this video or you like this video, please share it with a friend. Hit the like button below. Subscribe to the channel. I primarily specialize in human nutrition, but because I love my dog, today we're talking about uh, cat and dog nutrition. So if you love your pet, feed them real food. This is Zach with MusclesAndVeggies.com. Stay tuned.